Hello, everyone. My name is Mackenzie Vernetti, and I am the Director of Partnering Operations at BIO. It is my pleasure to be here with you today, and thank you very much for joining this webinar. Um, I am co-hosting this webinar today with my colleague, Dr. Lin, Secretary General of Taiwan Bio, um, and we are also joined by a special speaker, Joyce Tai, um, from the Development Center for Biotechnology. Um, and should we run out of time and not be able to touch on every question, please do send us an email to biopartnering at bio.org, and the team will be sure to get back to you as soon as possible. And I would like to take a moment to thank IQVIA for their support and sponsorship of the Bio 101 Partnering System for BioAsia Taiwan. We could not do what we do without great partners like you, so thank you. So today's webinar will include an event overview, more information about the partnering system and best practices and strategies. Um, I will take you through a brief live demo and then Joyce will share her experience partnering on behalf of the Development Center uh, for Biotechnology. And then, as I mentioned before, we will end with some Q&A as we have time. So without further ado, I will turn it over to my colleague, Dr. Lin, to take us through the event overview for BioAsia Taiwan 2022. Thank you, Mackenzie. And it's, it's, it is quite delightful that I could uh, present to you some overviews about the coming uh, BioAsia Taiwan 2022. Uh, although it would uh, start at end of July, but uh, I can I have a feeling that is uh, uh the intention and also the uh issues ethics has already been built up because i think this is a, a special year uh after two to three years pandemic right now we could have both uh, online and on-site meetings together and uh, so that uh, uh, this year's main thing will be the connecting the asian value chain so that we could uh, explore the untapped opportunities in Asia, which is one of the best connected place. I think this is would be the main focus of today's webinar is that uh, make us uh, fully utilize and take advantage of the convenience of the one-on-one -on -one partner assistance provided by Bio. So next slide, please. So basically, we would have about one or two weeks events and one-on-one uh, -on -one partnering actually will start in from the very early portion of this event. That means uh, we could have early access to all the company presentations. This year, we have approaching 100 companies, uh, large or small. Uh, which will be available in the platform on the platform as on-demand format. And then the next day we could we can start our one-on-one -on -one partnering until Saturday. That will be a Tuesday to Saturday in Taipei Times on site and online partnering. Uh, follow on with the starting up for the partnering, we will have conference and the exhibitions. And the online exhibition will last for another week until the end of the week that will be on um, August the 2nd. We will also have lots of focus symposium and workshops provided to all uh, the friends which has already registered for partnerships. Next one, please. So basically, how would we connect with the Asian value chain? It always starting from the innovation. And then this year, we will particularly uh, focus on how this innovation will be linked to the need of market and how would they link with the supply chain from the manufacturing, from the development point of view. And along all the... Uh, value chain, the investment will be also quite important so that we would uh, talk about lots of new ways to raising fund, a uh, new way to do the IPOs and how we could we invest across the border, including the cross 
uh, uh, multinational investment and also across different disciplines. So next slide will show you the uh, the glance of the total conference program. For these three days, very compact since uh, for each day we will have innovation, manufacturing and investments. Uh, starting, from, starting from the first day, there will be keynotes and plenaries speakers. And then right after that, we will start from the international collaborations, new exit strategies, and the new modality to cure. And second day, we will explore more on how to do the uh, research, development, and link directly to commercialization and with the new healthcare innovation strategy and how uh, could we win in the global competitions with the Asians or Taiwanese DNAs and other new innovations apply on healthcare system, including the artificial, artificial intelligence and digital health. On the third day, of course, we will explore more on the innovation portion of, about the novel platforms, manufacturing of novel bio, uh, biologics, and how CDMO will help on uh, doing for the strengthening of the supply chain. And uh, lastly, uh, that would be a special forum is that how could we do the multidisciplines, cross border uh, collaborations with the emerging opportunities when the other technology like information communication technologies uh, will interact with biotech. And this year we will, we will also have many regional collaboration forums. Uh, some is in collaboration with the Asian Federation of Biotech to talking about new zero emerging bioeconomy, which is also a very important issues here in Asia. And also uh, each and every country will present their uniqueness. Uh, alphabetically, of course, here it will be starting from Australia, Indians, Japan, Singapore, and also other uh, countries uh, like to link with the Asian value chain, including like the uh, United Kingdom and Netherlands. So this uh, regional collaboration forum will be also uh, be available as an on-demand format. That means uh, across the, the whole time of the event of the uh, by Asia Taiwan, uh, this will be available. So to accompany with the company presentations, entrepreneur pitch, and also with the regional collaborations of forums, uh, you would have a overview about the, the whole Asia area. And then in, in addition to that, with every day's uh, conference topics, we'll find out the the newest innovations and how could we support them through the whole value chain by manufacturing, by the investments. Next slide, please, please. So the keynote speech, one of the keynote speakers will be the uh, Nobel uh, Prize laureate, uh, Professor Shinya Yamanaka. So she, he will uh, talking about uh, the lies and frontiers with his stem cell research. And this will be, uh, also be one of the major supporters for the new innovation for cell therapy and gene therapy. Next one, please. We also have other speakers, for example, the chief uh, science and technology officers from Merck, uh, Dr. Matsi. Actually, she will talking about uh, how to solve the problems or cure the disease, uh, which would be the biotech and pharma questions by other disciplines uh, knowledge from like semiconductors, from the information and communication uh, technologies to incorporate with understanding of the basic mechanism and science of biomedicals. And then uh, Acuvius uh, Vice President will brief us with the latest market needs and PwC strategy will mention about uh, how with the new trend for investments. And uh, of course, we will have others uh, 
keynote and the plenary speakers. For example, uh, the CEO of Genomic England, he will uh, present us examples that how to use the public and the private partnership to solve the healthcare problem with a, a national database. And IMAC, which is uh, a advanced uh, player in semiconductor industry, he will mention about uh, how the technology such as semiconductor industry can help to solve the provided solution for healthcare. And finally, the Bio International, uh, the vice president and chief policy officers, uh, Joe Murphy will mention about how the government policy will affect the development of the biotech industry. Next one, please. So uh, we are actually, we will have much more sections compared to previous years we, with about 50% increase of numbers of speakers and sections. And uh, also we already have quite sizable registrations. So we are expecting that uh, through the, this one-on-one uh, -on -one parten partnership uh, uh, platforms, we will have more than uh, 200, uh, 2000 partnerships are uh, happening uh, in this one or two weeks. Of course, we we have uh, on-site and online exhibitions. Currently, we have uh, more than 500 uh, companies uh, already participate for the on-site uh, exhibitions. And uh, those attendees are coming from more than 30 countries. Next one, please. So those are the uh, companies will particularly have their specially designated time for the to present themselves in the company presentations uh, in addition to the exhibitions. Next one, please. So those are the uh, laid out for the on-site exhibitions. Next one, please. These are the pictures for the last years and, and also for previous years. Next one. So we are not only have the company from several countries, but also this will be an international platforms for everybody, including multinationals and the local biotech companies to interact and to uh, working on their collaborations. Next one, please. So I think I'm glad to mm -hmm. hand my time to Mackenzie to, so that we could use this wonderful one-on-one -on -one parting system to take advantage of the event and uh, make a successful or many successful partnerships. Mackenzie, please. Yes, thank you so much, Dr. Lin. Um, okay, um, so as an introduction uh, to partnering and the Bio 101 partnering system, it is the most efficient way to do business in the biotech and pharma industry without traveling all over the world. Uh, the system makes it easy to search for and request meetings with potential partners also attending the conference um, and allows you to arrange 30 minute private meetings to be held during the conference dates. Uh, BIO's partnering system regularly facilitates 60,000 and more meetings um, a year and is known for having many features to make it easy for you to find and communicate with potential partners. The system, for example, has a robust search that lists all participating companies and delegates and allows you to apply key filters to find those partners faster. Um, using the system, you'll manage all of your company's incoming and outgoing meeting requests all in one central location, and BIO schedules accepted meetings for you, uh, saving you time from all of that manual work of aligning calendars and finding mutual availability. So there are five core steps to partnering that happen after you've registered for the conference and receive your login information. The Bio 101 partnering system for BioAsia Taiwan 2022 is currently open. So as soon as you register within a day or two, um, you'll get an email from uh, noreply.partnering at bio.org with your login information and you can start completing these steps. Uh, so the first is to create and update your company profile. Uh, and I stress update because if you've attended a bio conference 
reference before, we automatically import your most recently used company profile for you to save you time. Um, some of that information though can get out of date from year to year, so make sure that you review it and make the necessary updates. The second is to select your availability for meetings. Your partnering calendar is unavailable by default and you'll need to open at least one time slot in order to be able to send or accept meeting requests. The third is to search for potential partners and send tailored requests. BIOS Partnering System has a powerful advanced search to really help you narrow down on those candidates and increase the quality of your meetings. And once you've found a potential partner, make sure to send them a personalized meeting request so that they understand the benefits and opportunities of partnering with you. Fourth, manage your message center actively and often. You'll find that new companies register daily, so check back um, and also make sure to respond to all incoming meeting requests. And fifth, kind of a freebie, uh, is that BIO schedules your accepted meetings for you, so you don't have to worry about your schedules, availability, locations, etc. Uh, we really do all of that work for you so that you can arrive at the conference with a plan, whether you're doing so um, virtually or in person, and that meeting scheduling starts on July 12th. Uh, so what is new at um, what is new with partnering at BioAsia Taiwan 2022? Um, so the first thing, the most important, is that there will be a mix of both in-person and virtual meetings. Uh, in-person meetings will be provided with an in-person location on site at the conference, and virtual meetings will receive a unique Zoom link courtesy of Bio. Uh, the type of meeting depends on the attendance types of those meeting participants, um, and we will. Go Go over this in detail um, shortly. Um, meetings will also be scheduled by BIO starting July 12th. This is different from, and I believe last year when it was self-scheduling. So BIO will be doing the scheduling for you to take a bit of that work off of your hands. Um, this does not mean though that you need to wait until scheduling begins uh, to start requesting meetings. Now is a great time to log into the system and request meetings. And I really do encourage you to do so. Um, once scheduling has begun, it will be done multiple times per day through the end of the conference. Conference. So there really is no deadline to send media requests. We'll still be scheduling meetings even during the conference dates. Um, you can also download the Partnering Mobile app for quick access to your schedule. Note that the app, though, is meant for on-site use. So if you're participating in virtual meetings, you should use your laptop or desktop computer to join those Zoom meetings. And then you'll notice in the system, um, due to the hybrid nature of this event, all delegates in the partnering system have an attendance type tag, like the ones shown here, um, next to their name. Uh, this corresponds with how they plan to attend the conference. And there are two attendance types. The first is in-person and virtual. These people are attending on-site in-person and um, also have the option to hold virtual meetings during times outside of those primary in-person hours. Um, and then the other type is virtual, and these people are attending the conference virtually only, and all of their meetings will be scheduled with a Zoom link. Should you need to change your attendance type, please do email us at biopartnering at bio.org as soon as possible, as that does affect how and when and where your meetings are scheduled. Um, and last but not least, we have also changed the layout of the Partnering System homepage to provide you with um, easy access to more key information, and we will go over that a bit in the live demo as well. Okay, so I would like to take a moment uh, to highlight the different partnering times taking place during uh, BioAsia Taiwan 2022. So in-person hours are Wednesday through Friday from 10 to 6 p.m. 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. local time in Taiwan. So if you are attending the conference on site in person, you can expect to only have in-person meetings during those times. We will not be scheduling a virtual meeting for you while you'll be on site at the conference. Um, if virtual partnering hours will be 24 hours a day from Tuesday, July 26th through Saturday the 30th. Um, Tuesday and Saturday are virtual partnering days only. So even if you're participating um, on site in person, you can still have virtual meetings on those days. And I do encourage you to take advantage of that and make sure that you're opening up times on your calendar those days as well. 
Um, if you are attending virtually only, you can have meetings scheduled anytime during those virtual partnering hours, so 24 hours a day, Tuesday through Saturday. Um, but of course, only during those times that you mark as available on your partnering system calendar. And speaking of your partnering calendar, you'll notice that um, in the system, regardless of whether you're attending on-site or virtually, uh, you do have a 24-hour partnering calendar. And this is really designed to give you the most flexibility and to get you as many meetings as you um, can, can make time for, essentially. Um, so let's see, for those, um, there are two time zones, uh, regardless, again, if you're virtual or on site, so make sure that you're paying attention to that. Um, the first on the left hand side is the conference time zone, so local time in Taiwan, um, and the other is your local time zone based on what your um, the, what the system is detecting from your browser. Um, so for those attending on site in person, I recommend referencing the CST time zone, um, the Taiwan time zone on the left um, when opening up your availability. As regardless of where you're located right now, um, this will be the local time zone of the conference when you're there. So make sure that you're opening up those times um, that make sense for when you're there in Taiwan. Um, let's see, for those attending virtually only, I recommend you reference your local time zone when opening up availability for meetings so that um, the meetings that are scheduled for you are done so at times that are convenient for you as well. Um, so also remember that you can always open up more time slots um, if you find that your meetings can't be scheduled due to no mutual availability. So you have the flexibility to go in and open up more times um, as we get closer to the conference as well. All right, and I realized that um, that hybrid partnering can be a little bit confusing. Uh, so I put together this chart here to show when and where your meetings will be scheduled based on uh, your attendance type and the attendance type of those that you are meeting. And again, we'll make these slides available to you afterwards. Um, we'll send these out with the link as well um, to the recording so that you can reference these easily. Um, a few things to note here, um, for those attending on-site in person, you may have a mix of of in-person and virtual meetings, depending on those that you're meeting with. Um, and if your meeting is with another in-person attendee, uh, the meeting will be scheduled in person during those in-person partnering hours. So we really will be prioritizing that in-person meeting for you, um, depending on who those, who those are that you're meeting with. Um, and then if any participant on a meeting is participating virtually only, the meeting will be scheduled virtually with a Zoom link. And while you're updating your availability for meetings, please remember to reference the conference program listed on the right side of the calendar screen so that you can plan your meetings around your top priority sessions. Um, you can add sessions uh, directly to your partnering calendar so you can further manage your availability as well as uh, this helps to make it so you can see your entire schedule all in one place in the partnering system or in the mobile app. Okay, and here are some best practices to help make help you make the most of your partnering experience um, at BioAsia Taiwan. Uh, the first is to prepare your profile. Uh, make sure that you are adding as much information as possible to help other companies find you. The more text and keywords you use, the more searchable and visible your company. Um, in addition to general fields like company type and description, make sure that you're adding in assets, services, and market products as they are applicable to you um, and select specific therapeutic areas and mechanisms of action. Uh, we've seen that companies that fill out their profiles in this much detail often get more applicable meeting requests and generally have more productive meetings. Start requesting meetings early as companies that start sending requests weeks in advance typically have more meetings um, and make sure to use the advanced search filters to target your most relevant prospects. Um, as I said before, the partnering system is open now, so um, as soon as you're registered, you'll get that um, login information, the email within a day or two, and you can, you can start requesting meetings immediately. Um, let's see, make the subject line of your meeting request count. Uh, make sure it's topical and something that encourages the recipient to view your request and not something generic like meeting requests that may be ignored. Then make sure to target your meeting requests to the recipient by providing specific benefits of partnering with you. 
and follow up as necessary. If it's getting close to the conference and you haven't gotten a response, use the reply only button on the media request to follow up. Um, also make sure to respond to all incoming requests. This is very important. Companies do appreciate responses, even if they are declines, um, so that this allows them to continue their outreach to other potential partners. And we're all pretty much professionals at virtual meetings by now, but these are some of the few tips for virtual meetings that I think are pretty much worth overstating. Um, make sure to look at the camera from time to time and not just at your screen. Uh, looking at the camera uh, is much more comparable to making eye contact with your fellow partner and looking elsewhere on your screen can sometimes make you um, look disinterested. Um, even though the meeting is virtual and you, may not, and you may not be taking the call from an office, it's still important to wear professional attire. Um, and a few more technical notes. Uh, for better sound quality, use a PC headset. I highly recommend this one. Um, mute yourself when not speaking to reduce any echoes or ambient noise. Um, and also an ethernet connection is generally much more stable than Wi-Fi, so opt for that if you can to ensure um, the greatest audio and video quality. And then don't forget to share your contact details. You can do so via the chat during the Zoom meeting um, or via the meeting request in the Partnering Systems Message Center. And now before we get to the live demo, I just want to take a moment to highlight some of the system's more um, most helpful features. Um, you can add your LinkedIn profile URL to your Partnering System Delegate profile that will create a clickable LinkedIn button for added visibility. There are many different advanced search filters on the Partnering System search page that, can, uh, that you can use to find potential partners fast. Um, and I will highlight um, some of my favorites uh, during the webinar. Let's see, your message center also has advanced filters uh, that make finding uh, certain requests and meetings quick and easy uh, for quick follow-up. Um, and you can share your contact information with a company of interest with a click of a button in your message center. I'll show you exactly how to do that during the demo as well. Um, and we make it easy to access and download your conference and meeting data uh, with various exports throughout the system located on the search page, calendar, and the message center. Um, and you can access the BioAsia Taiwan partnering system for an entire year after the event. Uh, you will not be able to send any new requests after partnering is over on Saturday, July 30th, but you can follow up on existing requests and download your meeting data. All right, so with that, I will click over to the one-on-one -on -one partnering system for a live demo. Okay, so when you log in, you'll be taken to the homepage that gives you an overview of your company's activity and presence, as well as some general helpful information. Um, you can view a summary of your company's meeting request activity and delegates along the left-hand side here. You have delegate information down here at the bottom. Um, in the middle, uh, which is kind of a new layout for us, um, you have more general conference information and we'll place any important updates um, and announcements here as needed as well. Um, you have a, a quick search here that'll take you to the search page if you want to um, use a basic search. And then along the right-hand side here, we have helpful information where we include tutorials, customer service, contact, a couple tips and tricks. Um, we'll also add the webinar link up here um, as well once we have that. Um, and then along the top toolbar here, it's important to point out these are really um, quick access features for the various parts of the account. So you have um, your company profile, the search page, calendar, message center. You can use this button to send a new request quickly. Um, you can view any of your bookmark companies here, um, as well as manage your notifications preferences and your personal profile, as well as logging out up here in the right hand corner. So when you log in for the first time, I recommend that you start with the company profile. 
Um, your company profile is your first impression to others in the system. So don't just take two minutes and uh, throw in some information that you have on your website. Really think about your goals for the conference and what information you can include about your company to help you reach those goals. Um, everything on your company profile is searchable. So make sure to include as much information, but also accurate information. And remember that BIO does import your most recently used company profile. So make sure to review and update this information, especially assets. Um, companies often forget to update the listed assets, assets especially um, asset phase, if that has changed since their last BIO partnering conference. And generally a note about searchability. Um, let's say that um, a potential partner here is looking for a biotech located in Taiwan that's, um, let's say, working in oncology. Um, and that's you. Uh, but if you neglect to mention oncology in your profile or add that specific therapeutic area, um, or even forget to um, specify your country or your location, um, you might not be in that company search results. So really think about um, that information. Even the most basic information in those pick lists can be important to making sure that you um, are visible in those search results. So with that, I'll take a moment to go through some of the profile fields here. Um, make sure to select a company type or whichever ones do apply to you. Um, you can add keywords, which will make your company a lot more visible, especially when someone is doing a more basic search on those specific keywords. Um, adding a brief description is very helpful um, because this will actually be, this will display under your company name in the search results. So I'll give you an example. This is right here, the brief description for this company. So as other companies are searching and they're scrolling through their search results, that brief description um, shows here under your company name. So it's really important to add in something that um, makes sense for your audience to be viewing first about your company um, to, to make you stand out in those search results. Um, definitely add in a, a full description. This doesn't have a character limit, so the sky's really the limit there. Um, make sure to uh, be selecting your licensing objectives if that's applicable to you. Therapeutic areas are very helpful, especially um, if uh, some of the larger pharma companies are looking for partners um, because they'll often use these um, these specific areas um, to search for companies that might fall underneath their portfolios. Definitely a great idea to fill out financial information so that someone can have that as a quick reference. Make sure to add contact information here, especially websites, so someone can easily do more uh, research on, their, on your company if need be. Um, if you have any asset services or market products, so assets like vaccines, diagnostics, antibodies, cell therapies, um, services, so consulting or contract manufacturing, and market products being medical devices, hospital hardware, um, those types of things. Um, take the take advantage of the fact that you can add in essentially a full sub profile for these specific items um, that can then be directly searchable themselves. So if you have um, an asset that you're looking to out license, um, definitely add that here um, so that someone can find that in their search results as well. Along the right hand side, you have a place to add in management. So if you wanted to add in um, your CEO's name or other high level management, you can do that here. Um, here is where any delegates, um, you and your colleagues, if you're registered for the event will be listed here. You can manage your profile as well as your colleague profiles from here as well. Um, and then you can add content that is visible in the system to anyone looking at your profile. So this is not the place for a confidential deck. Um, it's more for um, a non-confidential deck or you can even um, embed a YouTube video, um, add in a couple one pagers, that type of thing. Um, and then content that you list here as well as asset services and market products, you can actually add those um, to meeting requests for specific attention to call those out. All right, and after that, um, the next thing I would suggest is to go to the calendar um, where you'll be marking your availability for meetings as well as um, where you can view your meeting schedule. Um, I'm going to zoom out just a touch here. There we go. 
Um, let's see. So the calendar, as I had said before, displays in two time zones. We have the conference local time zone for Taiwan and then your, your local time zone based on your browser. Um, let's see. Note that your calendar is marked as unavailable by default, so you'll need to open up times to let us know when you're available. So make sure you're referencing the correct time zones when you're doing that. You can update your availability by opening up specific time slots one by one. Um, you can make the workday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. available in your local time zone on each day by clicking this button. And you can also change um, the entire day um, if you'd like as well. Um, let's see, make sure to reference uh, the, prog the program along the right-hand side of your screen um, to add sessions. So let me go over to Tuesday to give you an example. Um, so these are sessions here on my calendar. Um, when you add a session to your calendar, the system is actually going to ask you if you want to keep that time as available or not for meetings. Um, so you can click yes if you don't mind a meeting being scheduled during that time, but if this is a high priority session that you definitely want to attend, definitely click no here and it'll mark that time is unavailable for you. Uh, remember that there are five full days of partnering so make sure to open up um, times across all of the days um, and then you can see here um, let's see, let's go back to Wednesday, that my calendar on Wednesday has a few different things going on. Um, meetings will be shown in dark blue, um, sessions and program are in light blue, um, and then yellow here are personal events. So if you're taking any off-site off meetings um, or want to add um, a, a specific note to your calendar where you need to, you know, go to, um, you want to take lunch at a specific time or have a, a call that you need to schedule, make sure to use a personal note um, to do that as well. Um, let's see, and I also want to mention that you can export your partnering schedule from this page in a variety of formats. Um, so you can export both your um, individual and company calendar in PDF or Excel format here. Um, and then you can also, this ICS file downloads a static Outlook or email calendar file. Um, however, um, one of my favorite features of the system is that your meetings will be sent to your Outlook calendar automatically. Um, so make sure to, up, to accept those invites as they come in because that will keep your Outlook calendar um, updated. Um, simply downloading this right here um, is just a static file. It's not going to make those updates. So once meetings start being scheduled, you'll see those Outlook invites coming in um, automatically. Just make sure that you're accepting them and it will add it to your calendar. So it's another way, easy way to get your um, partnering schedule. Okay, and then we will go on over to the search page. Um, here is where you can apply both a both basic uh, text-based text -based searches um, as well as um, advanced searches, and you can also view the entire list of companies um, and delegates. So when you actually go to the search page first and don't apply any searches, you actually get the entire list of companies delegates, um, assets, and the like right here. Um, so if you wanted to download a full list of companies, you just come to the search page and then click this export link up here and that will download a full um, Excel file of all of the companies in the system. Um, let's see, once you've applied a search, you can also use this export um, link here to export those specific search results. One thing I want to point out specifically, it's very important, is the advanced search button here, which um, is often overlooked. Uh, this does help you narrow down on specific fields like um, a company type, location, um, a ther therapeutic areas, and more. And then also you can even isolate um, new companies that have been added since your last search. So if you are going in every day or every few days and running a specific search, but then, you know, a couple days later you want to run that same search but only want to pull in the new companies, you can do so here. So you can actually select um, companies that have been added over the last two days, or you can actually apply a custom filter um, with very specific dates based on your last search. And then let's see, you can also apply um, a search across all of these tabs. So for example, if I am looking for a biotech company, 
that is located in, let's go with Taiwan, that also has an asset type, let's see, let's go with antibody. This gives you those 11 results. So this really helps you narrow down, um, narrow down those prospects and you can actually see the full asset list as well that comes, um, that comes in that filtered list. And then one other quick tip um, is you can actually save this search to apply later. So you can actually click save search as new um, and then you can just label this as, um, I'm gonna label it just for time sake, search one. Um, and then I can easily apply that next. So just as an example, next time you go to log into the partnering system, you're on the homepage. Um, you click this little arrow here and you click search one and it applies your search for you. And then if you wanted, again, like I said, to isolate in the new companies that have registered since the last time you searched, you can do that here and apply that search filter on top of the search. So that um, is a good quick way to get those new companies um, that have been added to the system since the last time you were um, looking through the search page. Um, and then once you have found a candidate, um, you can click on the company in your search results to view their profile um, more fully. Um, you can send them a new request with this button here. You can bookmark them by clicking the little star. You can also, um, if you use the, click the printer icon, this will download their company profile um, straight from the system as well. All right, and with that, we will move on to the last part of our tour, which is the message center. Um, all of your company's outgoing and incoming meeting requests are here, and this is a lot like your email inbox, but it's shared among your entire company with any of your colleagues that are also registered for partnering. Um, there are filters along the left-hand side here that you can use to filter for specific meeting request statuses um, and directionality. So if you wanted to quickly isolate the meeting requests that you haven't yet responded to, you can filter for incoming as well as requested. And this shows me that I have two meetings that I haven't yet um, responded to. So I can do that quickly there. Similarly to Outlook, when you click on um, a meeting request, it opens here on the right-hand side um, in a bit more detail. Um, when you are viewing the request, here is where you can easily reference the participant type, the attendance type that I was referring to earlier. Um, so this will give you an idea of when, um, where, and really how your meeting will be scheduled. Um, so if it, in this example, let's say I'm attending in person and virtually, um, if I accept this meeting from the GMO group, this delegate is also attending in person. Um, so this meeting should be scheduled in person um, during those 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. hours from Wednesday through Friday. Um, and again, if any of the participants say um, virtually only, like this one, for example, I'm in person and virtual for this example, but um, Petunia here is virtually, this was given a, a, a Zoom link and it was scheduled um, on the, the virtual only day as a result. Um, for incoming requests, um, you want to either click the accept or decline button to respond. Uh, when you click accept, you'll be um, given the option to write in a brief message, um, add in any link resources and update the participants. And then once you have um, confirmed that, you just hit accept. Um, it accepts the meeting um, and then it will be scheduled by bio starting July 12th. Um, one thing to note is that if you have any meetings that are accepted that don't have any mutual availability, they will show here with this flag. Um, you are then encouraged to go into your partnering system calendar and open up more time on your calendar. Um, if a meeting time that is mutually available becomes um, open, this um, indicator here, here will disappear and the meeting will be scheduled in the next round of scheduling. Um, and then once scheduling starts, um, you can actually ask ask for a meeting to be rescheduled. So if something is scheduled at a time that's no longer convenient for you, um, you just go into your message center, click on that meeting request and click the request reschedule button. Um, and that will put it in a pending reschedule status. And then the system during the next round of scheduling will find a more suitable, um, a suitable time. 
Okay, and with that, I think I am going to end our demo. Um, this is a really good overview. And again, if you have any other questions or need any technical assistance, please feel free to contact us at biopartnering at bio.org. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to um, Joyce to give us um, a little overview on her experience with partnering. Okay, thank you, Mackenzie. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Joyce Stein from the Development Center for Biotechnology in Taiwan. And it's my pleasure to be here to share my experience in a bioconference one-on-one -on -one partnering. So I work in the business development department of DCB. And DCB is an innovation hub for novel therapeutic development with the ultimate goal of uh, facilitating the growth and development of Taiwan's biotechnology. So the BD team in DCB is not only to find a collaborating partner or licensee for DCB in-house asset, uh, we also could help in the first turn the international partnership between Taiwan's biotech and the global biopharmaceuticals entities. So for this purpose, uh, the one-on-one -on -one partnering of the bioconference is therefore a very important event for us. Especially due to the pandemic, the online meetings become one of the choice to meet with no distance limit and is effective. And we can sit at my desk and reach out to the potential partner around the world. So from 2020 to now, DCB has attended over 10 international exhibitions, including a bioconference, and met with more than 115 companies in over 200 one-on-one uh, -on -one partner meetings. So a lot of partnership have come through. And this system is beneficial to us and we think it's an essential platform in the business area. So next, I will share my experience in how I organize the meetings. Um, first, I will do the research and then search the companies in the uh, uh, partner system. Because uh, each has a different purpose in the meeting, you may want to look for the potential licensee, the client or investor. So we have to identify the companies that meet our need. After the advanced filter screen, uh, we, I may get a big list of these companies. So I will therefore do the analysis to find a company with strong potential. So the next step is my most important step which is communication and uh, focusing on the subject. Because we only have 30 minutes, if we can focus on the objective before the meetings, we can have a better discussion or get the essential information in 30 minutes. But most important is make a relationship during these 30 minutes. Having a connection is invaluable. Uh, lastly, to trigger the interest between each other in the meetings and maintain the friendship or business relationship to explore any opportunities now or future. So I hope all of you have the fruitful meetings during BioAsia. And I think we may meet some of you soon in the BioAsia uh, one one meeting meeting system. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Okay, so I think that we can now open it up for some Q&A, and there are a couple partnering-related questions. So can you clarify when virtual partnering meetings is available for virtual one-on-one -on -one partnering attendees? Is it only available Tuesday and Saturday? Great question. Um, so kind of depends on who you're meeting with. Um, virtual partnering um, can happen Tuesday through Saturday. 24 hours a day, depending on when you open your calendar for meetings. Um, if you are meeting, if you are virtual and you are meeting with another attendee that's virtual, that meeting can be scheduled at any point during that whole week. Um, if you are meeting with someone who is attending in person and uh, virtually, um, so, the, you know, they're doing a little bit of both, um, we are just not scheduling virtual meetings for those attendees during the 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. 
Wednesday through Friday. So it's a little bit confusing, but we want to make sure that those who are attending on site um, don't have to worry about finding a stable Wi-Fi connection or a quiet, you know, corner of a room um, to get a good um, a virtual meeting. We want them to be able to have time to sit down um, in a quiet space with a good Wi-Fi connection or Ethernet connection at their laptop so that you can actually have a very good productive meeting. Because we've seen a lot of people running around with their phones. Um, it's not really very conducive to a good meeting. So we just want to make sure that, for, especially for virtual attendees, that you're still having the, the meetings at a good, um, a good quality. So that's why we're doing that. But again, it is definitely up to you on how um, often you want to take meetings. Um, we've seen people have opened up times 24 hours a day because they want to, you know, be very accommodating of other um, people in other time zones. And that's completely up to you. Um, and like I said, you can go back and open up availability for meetings afterwards if you'd like. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, here we have one. Owing to time zone differences for virtual partnering, can a registrant share his or her registration with a colleague to carry on scheduled meetings? Um, so you could, um, if you needed to, um, send the the link information over to a colleague so that they can um, they can help you out with that. What kind of attendance types are you offering? Is that so important to have a relevant meeting? Um, so I wouldn't say that it's important to have a relevant meeting. Uh, we just are cognizant of the different types and how people are attending the event. And we want to make sure that um, they have a productive meeting where they, you know, have the right um, tools at their disposal to, to be able to communicate well. Um, so there are two types of attendance. There's in-person and virtual. Um, so it's, it's a hybrid, a true hybrid offering. So you you can be there on site, um, then you can also benefit from the virtual experience. And then there are those who know they're not going to be traveling on site, but they still want to take advantage of the partnering um, and all of the virtual program offerings. So there are those who are doing virtually um, only. Um, and you select that also when you go through the registration process. Um, and as you log into the partnering system, you'll see um, that, um, that tag next to your name as well, especially when you go to your company profile. So if you need to make any changes like that, just please email us at biopartneringapod.org and we'll take care of that. Okay, any other questions? Those were good ones. Those were ones I was expecting to answer and I would have brought up myself had no one asked them. So thank you all for doing that. Um, Dr. Lynn, do you have anything else you wanna add before we, um, before we adjourn? Uh, thank you, Mackenzie. And uh, thank you for the explanations. I noticed that uh, we do have a few uh, new items, actually some goodies of the, uh, this year's uh, systems. So is there anything you like to add on to comment on those uh, new features? Um, on the on the helpful features? Yes. Yeah, I mean, the, the newest thing um, really is to, to be paying attention to those attendee types um, and, and let bio be um, the heavy lifter. Um, so as in the past with some of our virtual events, and I think last year for BioAsia Taiwan, um, it was self-scheduling, whereas this year we're really trying to streamline it for everyone. Um, and the system will only be scheduling meetings at times that you've marked available on your calendar. Um, but we wanted to take a little bit of that work from you um, and streamline it a little bit. So take advantage of the fact that um, we can do a little bit of that heavy lifting. That's great. That's great. And also, I think uh, uh, we are expecting that uh, uh, to work together with everybody, uh, with bio and with all the attendees and with all other registrations. Uh, we are already have uh, people apply for the one-on-one -on -one partners uh, approaching 500 person to arrange so that I think we will easily have uh, more than 2,000 uh, matchings uh, this year. So we are hoping to work together with everybody, uh, including bio and also uh, whoever online today and uh, whoever not able to be online today. 
Absolutely. Um, and we do have one more question. Um, does the meeting platform provide the capabilities to have multiple people in one meeting? And that is correct. Um, yes, it does. Um, so you can add um, participants to meeting requests um, and to meetings themselves, um, and those will show up into uh, their calendars as well. So just make sure that they're registered for the conference. Um, when they're registered, their account will be created. They'll be under um, your company um, as a fellow colleague, and you'll be able to add them to those meeting requests. Request. So they get those Outlook invites and they can see that on their calendar as well. Yeah, so that as long as they are registered attendees, uh, they can attend the same meeting together. Exactly. Yes, thank you. Okay. All right, I think that's all for now. Um, and like I had said, any other questions about the partnering system, please email us biopartnering at bio.org. Um, and then we will be sending out the slides as well as um, the recording when it's available in the next couple of business days. So keep a lookout for that. Yeah, thank you very much, Mackenzie. And thank you very much for the, all the things behind the scenes. And uh, thank you for everybody who attend today's webinar. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day or a great evening. Oh, bye.